Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, FCC. Okay? And to those who are watching in the Philippines, good evening. And to some other parts of the world. Okay? As long as you are watching this live streaming of FCC, Filipino Christian Church International Worship Service, God bless you all. And thank you for, for, watching, for watching and for uh, worshiping with us. Okay? Like what our beloved Pastor Benji had already said in our online Bible study, last Saturday, and then uh, last Tuesday prayer meeting, and then even in the midday worship service this afternoon, we are doing this uh, in compliance to the directives of the UAE government to cancel all the gatherings, religious gathering, to prevent the spreading of the coronavirus. And we are supporting this because uh, this is for our own good. Actually, this is for the good of everyone, of everybody. So just Watch wherever you are and uh, just be with us. Let us learn together the word of the Lord. Let us worship the Lord together. You know what? Speaking of, of this uh, virus that has a name of Corona, when I was a young boy, whenever I hear the word Corona or crown, the first thing that came to my mind is a king or a queen. Okay? That's the first thing that came to my mind. Well, basically because that's what has been taught in school and also in the coloring book, right? We colored that when we were kids. And then uh, that was in uh, grade school, in elementary. When I reached high school, uh, Corona became a notebook to me. Why a notebook? Well, to those of you who are my age, you know for sure that Corona during our time, especially in the Philippines, is... Um, a, a classy book. It is the in book. It is the most popular book. If you have a Corona notebook in, uh, when you were studying then, we call that Yeyamanin. Okay? You were so popular because of that, okay? that Corona notebook. And then when I became a young adult and I was fascinated with car, and then when I became a family man, Toyota became, uh, Corona became a car for me. Toyota Corona. Okay. Actually, Toyota Corona was my, uh, my first car in the Philippines. Okay. If you will notice, okay, that's, okay, that's Corona, Toyota Corona, my first ever car in the Philippines. Okay. So again, when I became a young adult and a, and a family man as well, Corona became a car uh, to me. And then when I learned to watch beauty pageant, beauty contest because of my wife, Okay, whether it is Binibining Pilipinas or Miss Universe, Corona became, or it has a different meaning for me. It became the symbol of the fairest of them all, the most beautiful woman, okay, as far as the pageantry is concerned. But now, my brothers and my sisters, my friends who are watching there in your respective places, whenever we hear the word Corona, what comes to our mind for sure you know the answer right it is none other than the virus the corona virus or aka covid 19 and as far as this virus is concerned it brought fear to all people for sure this is the only crown or corona that we that we we don't wear and we don't want to have okay this is the only crown that we do not want to have in our lives. As of yesterday, March 19, 20, uh, uh, this year 20, uh, 504 GMT, the, the statistics of this pandemic is 2,219, I mean, 219,345. And the cases is 8,969 deaths. And those who have recovered is almost uh, uh, 96,085,745. Uh, and this is according to www.worlddometersinfo.com. And people posted a lot of articles and pictures about this coronavirus and even memes. Am I right? But what I would like us to know is this, brothers and sisters. This corona, this COVID-19, this coronavirus shows that man can die. Yes, the number of those who recovered from it is, is great. It's thousands. 
But then still, we cannot deny that there's still a lot of people that had died because of this virus. Therefore, it is no joke. This virus tells that people, you and I, can die. However, if this corona shows that man can die, there's another corona that I will be introducing to you this afternoon or tonight. And this corona or crown, okay, through this corona or through this crown, man can live. Again, brothers and sisters, if the COVID-19 coronavirus, if in this virus, man can die, in this virus that I am talking about, man can live. And this is the corona de espinas. Or in English, the crown of thorns. Corona de espinas is a Spanish term. Again, it simply means crown of thorns. Thorns. For sure, right now, Brother Itamar and Tachani, our Brazilian member, uh, most likely they are smiling right now because this uh, term or word is very much closer to, the, to, to, their, uh, to their language. This topic is also in preparation, brothers and sisters, for this coming Holy Week. Okay? Two weeks from now, it's already Holy Week. Um, the world will be having or celebrating the Lenten season this first week of April. So this is in preparation uh, for that. Okay? And I entitled the word of the Lord that I'll be sharing with you in line with this corona that we are talking about as corona de espinas, of course, the crown of thorns, is greater than the corona virus. Okay? And the passage that I will be sharing with you or exposing is Mark chapter 15, verse 17. And it says here from the New International Version, let me read it to you. They put a purple robe on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. It refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the background of this text or this passage is before the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, brothers and sisters, everyone, our dear viewers right now, when Jesus Christ was beaten before he was crucified, a crown of thorns was put on him, on his head. And he wore this crown until his death on the cross, just to show his love for you and for me, and just to give us the eternal life. Therefore, this corona, the espinas, is much greater, far greater than this coronavirus that the world is fearing of. And because of this crown, through this crown, this corona, the espinas, we can find life. We can live through our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the importance of learning the word of the Lord tonight. Basically, there are only two things that I would like us to share with you so that we can know about this corona de espinas or crown of thorns. What are these two things? The first is this. The crown of thorns speak of condemnation. Yes, the crown of thorns speaks of condemnation. Thorns in the Bible speaks of sin. Yes, it speaks of sin. It is a sign of sin. And sin is condemned. It has to be condemned. It needs to be condemned in the Bible. Let, me, let us go back in Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. And we can read this in the New International Version. To Adam, he said, this is the Lord speaking, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. And you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. The thorns, brothers and sisters, in this passage were a direct result of sin. Before Genesis chapter 3, this chapter, these verses that we have read, man has a harmonious relationship with God. How did, did I say that? Well, because basically man heard the voice of the Lord audibly, a proof that there's no hindrance in man's and God's relationship. 
But when man disobeyed God, okay, when man ate the forbidden fruit, the ground was cursed. Thorns sprang up from the ground. And that is literal. That's why we have a lot of thorns on our grounds right now. And then another passage that shows that thorns became a part of condemnation, the result of sin, okay, of man, is Joshua chapter 23, verses 12 to 13. Again, let me read it to you, Joshua chapter 23, verse 12 to 13. But if you turn away and ally yourselves with the survivors of these nations that remain among you, and if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become snares and traps for you, whips on your backs, and thorns in your eyes until you perish from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. The background of this verse that I just read is the Israelite community has already settled in the promised land. God gave them success in their campaigns. And Joshua, their leader, during that time was very much advanced in years. Okay? And so he knew he won't live any longer. So he called all the, the people, the Israelites, their leaders, and everyone. And then he charged them to obey what was written in the law of Moses. That if they ally themselves, if they associate themselves with the people among them, those people in Canaan, meaning... That is a direct disobedience to God. Those same people whom they allied uh, 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 themselves with them will become thorns to them. Again, the point, church, that I would like us to see here is thorns are consequences. It is a direct consequences of man's sin against God. Okay? It is a sign of sin. Not only thorns are signs and consequences of sin, but thorns are also a sign of sorrow. It is a sign of sorrow. Let's go back again in Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. And let me uh, read it to you again. The thorns are a sign of sorrow. Aside from it is a sign of sin. Curse is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. Before man fell to sin, referring to Adam and his wife, they don't yet labor during that time okay, for their food. God placed them in the Garden of Eden. Remember the passage. Okay? Remember the book of Genesis. The Lord created them. Man and, and, and wife, the Lord put them in the Garden of Eden. And then God commanded them that they can uh, freely eat all the fruit-bearing trees in the Garden of Eden, of course, except for that uh, forbidden fruit, for that forbidden tree. God forbade them to eat, of, to eat it, even just to touch it. So we know the story. Before the fall of man, Adam and Eve, of course, uh, it is implied that they, uh, that they uh, got hungry, that they eat the food there, and they, can, and they eat all the, the food, the, 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 the fruit that they need, without shedding a single sweat. Okay? They don't labor. They don't labor. They don't labor. However, when they sin, when man fell to sin, into sin, that's the start that they labored, that they need to labor, that they need to work out for their food. And not only that, according to the passage that we just read, thorns sprang up, so meaning... To those of you who are familiar with farming, agriculture, or just even, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, just even gardening. I remembered when, uh, during those grade school days, right, uh, uh, we have gardening, gardening uh, subject, okay? In order for us to make a plot first, in order for us to garden, we need to pull out all the weeds. We need to pull out all the thorns in the ground, in the soil, in order for us to really, what, cultivate it. Then and then we can just plant. So that's the same thing also with Adam and Eve during that time. They need to labor. They need to work 
for their food. And that is a sorrowful thing, right? Again, because if you will compare their life before, huh, there's no sweat, okay? They, they can f eat anything, no sweat. But after they sin, they need to, uh, to labor, they need to work out on the ground. And I do not know you, but uh, me, I, a lot of times during our gardening time when I was, when I was young, when I was in grade school, I was always being pricked by the, by the thorns, okay? By the thorns. Does any one of you there watching uh, right now also been pricked by the, by, by the thorns, especially by that makahiya, right? It's, it's, really, it's really painful. Am I right? So the same thing. It brings sorrow. It brings sorrow. That thorns brings sorrow. But upon knowing all these things, my dearly viewers out there, let us now go to Jesus Christ. Jesus wore a crown of thorns. For sure, the thorns pierced into his head, right? There are a lot of explanations and research about that and how it brought pain and bleeding, right, to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Aside from the whipping and from the beatings that he, that he received, okay? But the point is, it speaks of condemnation, the Lord Jesus Christ was willing and was condemned for you and for me so that we will be saved. So the crown here, the crown here, brothers and sisters, the thorns here speaks of condemnation. That's the point that I would like us to see. The Lord Jesus Christ became our substitute on the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ wore that crown of thorns crucified on the cross. He was condemned. So that you and I will not be condemned. That's the good news for us, right? And because of that, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done, because the Lord Jesus Christ wore that crown of thorns and crucified, the crown of thorns, the thorns has now has a new meaning in the Bible. If at first, before, if the crown of thorns speaks of condemnation, now it speaks of salvation. Yes, brothers and sisters. It speaks now of salvation, which is the last and the second thing that I would like us to learn. Since Jesus Christ wore that crown that symbolizes sin, it means that he took our sin. Okay? According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, speaking of the cross, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ took our sin. Peter the writer of 2 Peter was talking to the believers in this chapter to live godly lives, which includes submission to authority, even they experience harshness. That's the background. That's the context of this passage. Peter said that it is better that way than to suffer because of wrongdoing. Though that is the context, brothers and sisters, though that is the context of Peter, but still, he likened it to what the Lord Jesus Christ experienced on the cross which is the truth that we are discussing, that even though the Lord Jesus Christ commit no sin, He became the sin, a sin for us, so that we will, become, we will be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ took our sin, brothers and sisters. He bore our sins on the cross. Jesus became our sacrificial lamb. He is our sacrificial lamb. He is our substitutionary atonement so that you and I will be saved. And you know what? Aside from the Lord Jesus Christ has been our substitute, okay, atonement, He died on the cross. He didn't took our sin. He didn't only bore our sin on the cross, but He also took our shame. He took our shame. Hebrews chapter 2, 12 verse 2 says, Looking to Jesus, the founder, the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. The writer of the book of Hebrews commanded us to fix our eyes on Jesus because he's the founder and the perfecter of our faith because he endured the cross and taking up with him the shame, the shame on the cross. 
He even despised it. He even despised it. Now, my point is this. You see, brothers and sisters, crucifixion is the capital punishment during that time of the Roman Empire, in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. And being crucified was a shameful thing. Yes, being crucified is a very shameful thing. First, because those who were being crucified were the worst criminals. Not just criminals, but the worst of the worst of criminals. Meaning to say, if you are being crucified, if you are being nailed on the cross, it means you are a very worst criminal. And that's a shameful thing. Second, the shame that the Lord Jesus Christ bore on the cross is the ridicule and the taunting of the people. And even with the, with the soldiers, Okay? The soldiers mocked the Lord Jesus Christ. They were the ones who put the thorns, uh, the, the crown of thorns on him before he was crucified. And then they were ridiculing him, uh, posing to bow down before him, hailing him. But actually, it is a taunt. It is a ridicule to the Lord Jesus Christ. They were, they were shaming the Lord Jesus Christ. As if they were saying, okay, so what are you now if you're the king of the Jews? If you're truly a king, then how come that we are spanking you? How come we are beating you? Okay? It's a shame. They were shaming the Lord Jesus Christ. And most of all, according to history, another shameful thing that we need to learn about the crucifixion or being nailed on the cross is you will be stripped off of your clothes. The Lord Jesus Christ was stripped off of his clothes when he was crucified. And it was a shameful thing. It was a shameful thing. He's naked. Publicly, everyone would see his naked body on the cross, hanging on the cross. It's a shameful thing. Point Church is... The Lord Jesus Christ also took our shame. When he took our sin, he also took our shame. You see, my dear viewers, what Jesus went through and endured for us on the cross, okay, even though it is a very, what, painful, shameful thing, but the Lord Jesus Christ didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. Aside from taking our sin and our shame on the cross, he even did more. And what, is, what was this more that I'm talking about? He offered salvation. Offered salvation. Again, he didn't, he, he, he didn't just took our sin. He didn't just took our shame. He offered salvation for us. The eternal life. John chapter 3, verses 14 to 19 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the famous verse that, that most people know, John 3, 16, as it, uh, as it continues, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. And whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son. The, the only Son of God. You know what, brothers and sisters? Today actually is our Friends Day. Our Friends Day. Maybe you cannot come here, you cannot bring your friends here on, in, here on our church because of the situation, the quarantine that uh, we've been practicing. But still, you can share this link to them. You can even uh, ask them to watch with you right now so that they will, will be able to see and listen to the Word of God. Church, again, the word of the Lord is unstoppable. The salvation of the Lord is unstoppable. Even at this very moment, a lot of people could be saved through the word of the Lord right now. 
So what a loving God our God is. What a good God our God is. That crown of condemnation has now speaks salvation. The crown of condemnation has now become the crown of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is for everyone. This is for everyone. And this is only in Jesus Christ alone. God is not respecter of men. Whoever you are, whatever we are, we are the reason why Jesus wore that crown of thorns. The corona, the espinas. If this coronavirus fears you, friends, brother, sister, this corona de espinas is the way to live. We need to know more of this corona de espinas. So far, as I wrapped up the word of the Lord that I am sharing with you, the corona de espinas is greater than the coronavirus. Yes, it is very far greater than the coronavirus. Again, why? Because the coronavirus makes man die. Through this virus, man died. But with this corona de espinas, we can live through the Lord Jesus Christ. It speaks before of condemnation, and now it speaks of salvation. Okay? The eternal life. And this crown of thorns, brothers and sisters, that speaks salvation, also speaks invitation. Before it speaks condemnation. Now it speaks salvation. But it doesn't stop there. It also speaks invitation. Invitation for what, pastor? Invitation to have eternal life. But how can we have eternal life, we ask. Maybe you're asking, how can we have eternal life right now? How? How? Well, to have eternal life, brothers and sisters, first, we must, we must, do, we must uh, admit that we are sinners. Let us admit our sins before the Lord. And in, ad in admitting that we are sinners, it means that we are also admitting, we also need to admit that we need a Savior. And that Savior is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only Savior. The Bible says that He is the way, the truth, and the life, John chapter uh, 14. And only through Him we can come to the Father. So aside from admitting that we are sinners, that we have sins, we also need to repent from it. We need to repent from our sins. We need to say sorry. We need to feel uh, regret. We need to, to, to feel remorse of doing all those sins. And then after that, it's just like ABC. First, we need to accept or receive the Lord Jesus Christ, that Savior that we're saying here right now. We need to accept Him. We need to receive Him. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, Yet to all who receive Him, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, to those who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. I always say this, my dear um, viewers, that not all people are children of God. I often hear before that all of us, all people, all people are children of God. But as far as this uh, John chapter 1 verse 12 is concerned, the word of the Lord says that not all people are children of God. Hindi pala lahat ng tao ay anak ng Diyos. Kundi ang anak lang daw ng Diyos ay sino yung mga tumanggap sa Kanya. Those only who receive the Lord Jesus Christ accept Him in their lives. To them, was given the right to become children of God. And then after accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to believe and confess. Again, as I had said, ABC, brothers and sisters, accept, believe, confess. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10 says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believed in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, For it is with your heart that you believed and are justified, and it is with your mouth 
that you confess and are saved. So to those of you who are watching right now, I do not know who you are, but the Lord knows who you, who you are. For God knows everything. God sees us. If you want to have eternal life, if you want to have Jesus Christ in your heart as Savior, then I am more than willing and glad to lead you in a very simple prayer. Prayer of accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. If this is the desire of your heart, if the Holy Spirit is convicting you right now, and I believe the Lord is convicting you right now, I would like you to follow me in this simple prayer of faith, repentance, and acceptance. Wherever you are right now, just bow down your heads, close your eyes, dear viewers, and repeat after me of these words. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I humble myself to you now. I acknowledge my sins. Lord, forgive me. Lord, cleanse me. Come, Lord Jesus, into my heart and life as I open them to you now. From now on, I will follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Dear viewers, if you follow that word of prayer, please type your name and your contact number on the comment section of this, of this link or of this broadcast, and we will get uh, in touch with you. We want to know you. We want to, to pray for you more, okay? So that the Lord will continue to, to, to bless you. But that is for those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. But to us, brothers and sisters, who already believers of God, of the Lord, this is not the end. This is not the end. We still need to, to proclaim this good news to the whole wide world, to all the people, especially we are, uh, the world needs us right now. The people are frightened. Uh, the people are in fear. The people experience confusion because of this coronavirus that uh, we are experiencing. Again, brothers and sisters, through this corona de espinas, the crown of thorns of the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be saved. They can live with God. So let us take this opportunity, my brothers and sisters. Let us take this opportunity to really share them the Lord. Let us share them the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because people need the Lord. To inspire us more, let us hear a song of Steve Green that, that's entitled, People Need the Lord. And it will be sung to us by our dear brother, Dave Cabanatan. <laughs> 